Hey everybody, welcome to the next episode of the Strand Tennis Center podcast, filled with tips, advice, tennis, not tennis, just life advice too, whatever you need. Uh, like it on YouTube, share it on uh, the podcast as well. Thank you. Are you ready? You got some nice scruff going on. Oh, are we on? Yeah. I'm sorry. On. I was looking at my phone. I was, <laughs> yeah. I was being like every millennial. Yeah. Every generation. Hey everybody, welcome to the Strand Tennis Center podcast. We took a little bit of a break because we put the troops on hiatus. Uh, I think, what was it, September 3rd through the 4th, we closed. Uh, we wind it down. We actually never did that before where we shut down. We usually do maintenance, but we don't usually just shut off and let everybody leave. But it was nice. How was your uh, trip, Santi? It was great. Went What's to it? California. Fun. Good. Really nice out there. Good. It's good. You miss it out there? I said it was really nice out there. Good. I do miss it, too. <laughs> yeah, I do miss it, too. So I was doing my maintenance week. Cause I threw everything out and cleaned everything up, and you guys uh, go away and enjoy yep. yourselves. Yep. Uh, but let's do some top-of-mind stuff first. So I was thinking of the U.S. Open. There was a couple of things on my mind because we were watching, obviously, all these young guys. and Like, number one, listen, uh, these young guys are great players. They're unbelievable, right? They're, you know, Alcarez is ridiculous. Rude is unbelievable. And I got to put up the, I was looking for it because I would, yeah. I, when I was doing, when I do those Yonex things, Rude hadn't even qualified. It was like three years ago. It was in 2019. He was just oh. sitting in the back oh, having a drink. Oh, yeah. We yeah. were hanging out and he, I took a, we took a picture. I got to put it up because he was just a kid that didn't even qualify for the event. Yeah. And he's become unbelievable. Uh, all these guys are great players, but, and they talk, oh, this is the year of the changing of the guard. But look, Djokovic didn't get allowed to play. Like, yeah. I really think it probably would have been Nadal, Nadal, Djokovic, Djokovic again. And Djokovic is really the best hardcore player in the world still. And if you want to talk about silly topics of him not being able to play, I think it's the most ridiculous thing. Now, look, I don't know how you feel, Santi. The guys had COVID twice. Mm -hmm. The vaccinations, you know, are not really as effective as they were because there's different strains, right? Yep. What is he going to do? He's going to fly and he's going to play his tournament. He's going to go to his hotel room. Who's he going to, like, what's going to happen? Yeah. Like, really. They should have let him play. I think they should have let him play, and I think it's crazy that they have not it's let him play. Paper, they won't let him play. Uh, I can't, but my point is, really, I think if he plays, we're not talking about, we're talking about the young players, but we're not talking about, like, oh, it's a new era and all this stuff. Yeah. They would have won all four again. And Federer's coming back and playing, uh, Oh, the is. Labor Cup, and okay. then he's supposed to play a full season in 2023. We'll see what happens. Okay. But regardless of that, I probably, like McEnroe said, I probably have never seen a faster player on the court than Alcaraz. That guy, or that kid, he's 19, kid, yeah. is unbelievable. It's amazing how it, To me, I've never seen a person intimidate you with the energy in his legs. Like, he yeah. is so springy and so energetic that it's almost intimidating how much energy he has. To me, he's like an MMA guy, like, oh, yeah, going to just yeah. rip your head off. Like, yeah, he's yeah. that, like, ready to, like, pounce. Ready to pounce. Mm -hmm. It's impressive. It's impressive. But my other comment was we were having this discussion about the U.S. Open. <clears throat> and a lot of tournaments, it's a misconception. They're not all equal pay, but the U.S. Open is equal pay. But to me, I really think for the fan... And just for the money, like yesterday's match was, was good in the second set between Jaber and uh, Swantek, I think. Um, I'm just never going to pronounce her name right. Uh, I really think if it's equal pay, it should be equal time. So I think they should play five sets. Five sets. I think they should. I don't think it's fair, and I don't think it's fair. Set, at least start, how about we start with the final being five sets? Yeah. But then they're not used to it, though. You know, if well, then the let's do something. We have to do, yeah. well... We have to do something because think about the ticket you buy. Think about you going yeah. over there. You're watching the mixed doubles and a final that may not, even if it's interesting and long, it's still not long enough to satisfy the event, I think. Last year I went to the, the women's finals and I missed like the first two games. And then, you know, she, uh, what's her name? Uh, Rikandu or whatever her name Rikandu is. Won yeah, she won sets. She won in two sets. Yeah, I was like, oh, it's over. I it's was there over. for like an hour. You're right. Even. And all yeah. that trip and, and I, all that it travel. Took longer to get there than to, you know. That's why I think they have to at least, I don't know. I, I, I'm just trying to make it a little bit more like it's one match. So when you have a tournament and there's a thousand matches going on, okay, you get your money's worth. 
But yeah. when you're in the semis and the finals, you probably should extend these things. And to me, the listen, the perfect example is when you when you compete for a marathon, the women don't run half a marathon. Mm -hmm. They run the full marathon. So mm -hmm. why can't they? They should. They're equal. They should be doing the same thing. I, I never understood that. They used to have the year-end championships where the ladies played five sets. It was interesting. Why, why wouldn't it be interesting? Why wouldn't they consider it? Yeah, and, be it, nice. and it used to be the open, and I think to me, I think more people would watch women play correct. if it was longer, because most people don't would. really watch unless they know the person. You know, I, they I think they would. Enough. I think that's why Super Saturday. If you remember Super Saturday, the U.S. Open, you see the men's semi, mm -hmm. the women's final, and then a men's semi, because to me, the women's final is. Who knows how long it's going to be, so that's a great day. But unfortunately, the guys were getting killed. They're playing Saturday and Sunday, yeah, yeah. five sets. It's unfair. Yeah. So it's true. They should put it on Friday for the men, Thursday for the women, the semis. I just That's just my thought on the U.S. Open, thinking about it. Uh, going there, it is so packed. It is so crazy packed. Like when I used to go there in the 80s and 90s, you could go there and bring a picnic basket, leave, come back, eat outside of Corona Park, and come back. Like, it's totally different. You can't. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's thirty bucks to park. Think about how yeah, much yeah. money I was thinking about. They're probably making three or four million dollars a day in parking, yeah. in the height of it. Yeah. The amount of money that's rolling through there is crazy. I and to me personally, the stadium, Arthur Ashe, is too big. I just don't. You can. The nosebleeds. Uh, the you nose gotta wear. You, you gotta wear anything. binoculars. Yeah, yeah. You gotta put binoculars I, I on. I saw Serena and nosebleeds, and they're just like just a speck. Yeah. You know. Really, the best seat in the house to me, if you can spend a little money but you don't want to break the bank, is buy a Louis Armstrong courtside seat, because the concession is private. It's closed off from general admission, so there's no line in the bathroom, no line in the concession because you only have a you know four or five thousand seats that are courtside there that are below in the lower end and it feels and it's a nice stadium it's much more cozy it's a better stadium that's what i would do i'd buy courtside and i think i'm going to just do that buy a courtside and then stay there i mean that's the best part then you can walk around the park if you want to as well uh and then you miss the ash things but ash is just so big yeah. so big because you're like oh i got down to the second load you know I'm, I'm still like yeah dizzy from where the second loge is um so that's kind of my top of mind. I think, what do you think is going to win today? Uh, Akaraz, probably. No, I, I think know. everybody's favoring him now, and this is always the weird He's thing. He's a kid. He's a kid. I want to see a kid win. Rude is playing really well. I think, what, I, I, yeah. think, I think Rude is super consistent, unbelievable forehand. Doesn't, not as dynamic as Alcaraz, but sometimes you don't have to be Alcaraz. Is, you know, who knows? Will he be tired? Everybody's saying that it's impossible, but I don't know. Yeah. yeah, that's a tough call. You'd like to think he's probably favored. I'm sure he is. Uh, we'll see. And it's for number one in the world. That's pretty cool. For both of them? Yeah, whoever wins is number one. one. Yeah. Um, so basically, this is a transition period. We start our fall session tomorrow. Um, this, is a, this is a time where you have to really put your head down, work really hard. Because the summertime gets a little bit more of a breath, and this is where you need to really buckle down and just say, okay, I may be a little tired. I may get a little tired, but I have to understand that there's only windows of opportunity, you know, you know, indoors, outdoors. These are this, this is the thing, and you need to be as humble, show as much customer service as you can. Because, again, I always say during this time, people always get a little bit, hey, we're so busy, da, 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 da. It's really based, you know, we, you know, I like to think we do a great job, but the weather affects our business. I'm sure it does. Um, uh, so in general, I think the really, you can never stop, you know, and like I clean everything. Like I'm thinking about it, you never stop thinking that a job is too small for you. You just can never stop doing that because once you start doing that, you can delegate other jobs to people, but you always got to be willing to say, oh, that person's not doing that job. Okay, I'll do that job. Like I'll, I'm going to be working some of the front desks over the next couple of weeks because 
haven't found the right person, right? So you you can't just say, oh, I'm not doing it because those yeah, things yeah. are beneath me. I mean, me. I see you sweep and stuff. I see you do all the little things, you know, like you have. Well, what yeah. are you supposed to do, yeah. right? Yeah, somebody you just, has to do it. You just grab it and get it. And that's when you... And that's when you notice it in employees, whether, and that's fine. Again, some employees won't pick up a piece of paper or a piece of garbage. But then that's who they are, right? They're only that. They're only going to be an hourly person or they say a B player. And there's not that many A players. There's a certain amount that'll be like, oh, oh, well, this person's actually taking ownership and interest in the club. And you can't really, I don't think you can teach that. I don't think you could all of a sudden motivate someone to be this entrepreneurial leader, a player. I think it's just, it is what it is, and that's okay. I think, uh, I think it's the problem is when I, I think we've discussed this, when I tr you yeah. try to crowbar in. But you can't force them. Yeah. That's pretty much it. You can hope that they do these things or take initiative, but you can't force a person to yeah. care. What are you looking forward to this fall? This fall? Uh, Anything different? Anything like. Um, I mean, in. In terms of the club, I don't know. It's pretty much similar things for me. Um, but well, I am I, looking forward to, like, fall weather. I like fall weather a lot, and it gets cold. Thinking about business. Yeah. I got some new jobs for you, buddy. <laughs> okay. I got some new work for you. <laughs> okay. We've got, a, uh, we've got some uh, college videos to do. Oh, sh okay. Yeah, some, uh, Sounds you know, fun. Yeah. For, like, uh, so players. try to get in. Yeah, 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 we'll yeah, do, yeah. we we'll do some college fine. videos yeah, and things like those that. Those are fun. It's good. It helps yeah. them get exposure, and because you realize, you know, these these services charge a bundle. I I was talk with a client. They're like, they sell us hard right away. They're saying, and they're all just selling contacts. Yeah. It's like real estate. So I can make a video. Anybody can make the video. But mm -hmm. he's saying, I have all these contacts, or he or she. Wow. It's just like a realtor so, saying, okay. Yeah, yeah. Any realtor say they can put it on the MLS. It doesn't make any difference. It's the relationships you have with coaches and teams and players and athletic directors and say, okay, take a look at this, take a look at that, yeah. take a look at this. Well, that's, I guess that's what you're paying for if you really want to. But then paying they, for the they relationships. Up, up yeah. So, so you're paying that, to get known. Or, uh, you would have to something. have, you know, a great resume of doing that service and say, listen, uh, out of 100 people that have come to us, 95% of them are, you know, <laughs> and it's really the athlete. 95% of them have, it's really... The most important thing with those kind of companies is getting the marginal athlete where they want. So, in other words, not promising the moon, which is any kid that goes to Stanford doesn't need that because they're going to reach out to them. It's the kid that wants to go to, say, you know, Carnegie Mellon or somewhere that is Division One or something that is not, like, on the radar. The coach, you wouldn't be on their radar, but you have a decent UTR. Say you have a UTR of 9 or 10, not 13. And that person wouldn't notice you. You get lost in the shuffle of all the videos. So that is yeah, that a sense. big thing or a big key for relationships is, is being able to, as that service, have that relationship to get that marginal player into the school that they necessarily can't get into because they just don't have the contacts for it. When you get become like a 13-UTR, 14-UTR, People are reaching out to you anyways. You're getting, yeah. you're like a college football player. People are just sending you yeah. letters and emails yeah. and calls, so you don't have to worry about any of that. But that'll be a new, a new job title. Well, we've did it before, but it'll be more. I think we're going to create more of a service out of it. That's cool. That'd be fun. I yeah. like doing them. Yeah. I like watching good players play and, like... Well, it's pretty yeah, simple. I mean, social media, sounds, people, you put a good yeah. point on there, people like it. Yeah, like, it's yeah. really hard. And it's amazing, social media, how nasty they are when we put oh, kids yeah. on that are just doing their best, and we mention a tip, and they're like, is this a joke? I'm like, you know, most of the kids that yeah. play are not great, yeah, and you yeah. should understand that that's life. People don't like reality on, on, uh, on social media. They want, like, the great player, the great shot, the great this, because most people's, you know, lives aren't very happy, so they want to, they wanna, you know, escape. So escaping is the same thing like movies like this. I don't want my own life shown back at me. So if I look at a bad tennis player or somebody that's struggling with their stroke, it just reminds me of myself and I hate myself. <laughs> you know, that's I mean, that's really what it is. I mean, what else is there? And then they spread hate. I mean, the hatred yeah. on social media. Oh, my God. And that's why some of the kids were afraid to be on sometimes. Oh, even yeah, not yeah. even their faces, just their point, because they're so rough. Comments are so rough. Yeah. I mean... Just, I mean, wow. <laughs>
And most of those people have never hit a tennis ball or they've never played. They're just, and that's what they want. They want to get a rise out of you and you just kind of have fun with them and say, I always say like in a comment, note to self, I uh, need to work on my teaching skills or whatever or something, you know, something silly. But so you always find new ways like giving you a different job to keep it fresh and keep it interesting because Really, most of the time, you're working, right? And you need it interesting, and you need a good culture, and you need something that makes you, you know, just want to get up in the morning, right? Yeah. So uh, what was your favorite spot in California, though? Like, when you went to L.A., didn't you? Uh, I went to L.A., went to San Diego, went to Sequoia, went to uh, Malibu, I think. Okay. You went all over the place. Yeah, we drove a lot. Uh, Did a bunch of spots. Just you and your friend? Yeah. Um, I think my favorite... I like Manhattan Beach. Yeah. I really like Huntington because it has really good waves. But Manhattan Beach, the like, the restaurants and stuff are like, it's prettier there. It's really pretty there. My brother lived in Manhattan Beach, yeah, and I spent oh, okay. a lot of time there because yeah, yeah. he lived in an apartment there, and I was always it's there. Pretty, there. yeah, it's great because uh, it's it's very like it feels like it's like summit like a summit town yeah, yeah, by yeah, the yeah. beach. Mm-hmm, exactly. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. People are you know it's more of a the one high net worth area. The one that's trash is. Uh, Hermosa? Hermosa's no, nice. No, no. Um, fuck, what is it called? Uh, Trash. It's, uh, I forgot what it's called, but it's... Is it below Manhattan no, Beach? No, it's, it's above it. What's it called? Uh, well, Santa Monica's Santa above... Santa Monica. <laughs> that one is like Jersey Shore. Sorry, yeah, I wanted Jersey. Little, but it's like, with, the, it's, with, with, it's, the, with the boardwalk and all that stuff. Trash. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It reminded well, me of Jersey. I was like, but oh, this is stupid. But look, this is what happens. Like, some towns... It's cultural like, diversity. Like, uh, like wealth California is very liberal, right? Yeah. But some towns won't allow, you know, indigent bums or people in. Yeah, like yeah, Manhattan yeah. people won't. Manhattan there's Beach no, won't. There's no, the, like, uh, homeless people in Manhattan Man, Beach. They'll yeah. ship them up to Santa Monica or yeah, Venice, yeah. right? Because yeah. Venice is really messed up. You have these $4 million homes and you got sh- tents and crack addicts across from it yep. because they won't ship yep. the people, move the people out. Yeah. Like. Like, it's a very yeah. fine line. I think they need to go into shelters or whatever, but, and that's what happens. Inside of a liberal state, there are some conservative sections. Not conservative, but just more like, listen, we pay we pay all pay this our money. tax dollars yeah, are yeah. a ton of money. Like, like, there's no homeless people in Newport no. and all that. No. Oh, Orange County? Yeah, yeah. No, there's, that's not going to happen. Because, I mean, look, what are you paying the money for? Yeah, what, exactly. What's the point? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So... Yeah, but Manhattan Beach is a nice spot. Very pretty. It's great. You it's know, pretty. you get right there. You see sunsets. It's just, mm-hmm. it's the best. Yeah, nice. No, I'm glad you had a good time. Yeah. Uh, now, that's really all I had. I wanted to talk about that. We'll talk about the new session. Uh, we start on Monday. And uh, that's it. It's not an ad. I just, you know, I haven't spoken in a while, Santi. So, uh, you and I, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's been busy. Everyone's been busy, I know. Every, well, club, everybody's club been away. Really no, but this is the biggest thing I'll talk about, human resources and things. Yeah. When you give people the time off, they have to respect the time off. And it has to be... And then I always bring it back to myself. So I placed a bet with Maria, and I said, hey, uh, I'm giving, we're giving them five days off. What are the odds that someone shows up late? Um, and I won my bet. Yeah. Because I bet that yeah. someone's not going to make it. Yeah. So... As an employee, we were talking about picking up a piece of paper, you don't have to care as much as the boss. You have to care enough to keep your job, though, and respect it. Because if you get five days off and you just go, hey, I can't, oh, I missed my flight, I can't make it in, oh, I'm going to take three extra days because we don't really start till Monday, that's not respecting the job you have. That's being like, hey, man, like, it doesn't really matter. Yeah. But it does matter. And then I take it back to myself. So anytime that happens, I'm like, what am I doing wrong for me not to be clear enough of how important it is for you to be here on time? Am I not being clear for you to be so disrespectful to your own job? You have to respect the job. Baseline, that's it. I mean, I'm not expecting anybody to go, okay, I'm going to go paint this wall even though I'm a tennis pro and because it needs to be done, I don't expect stuff like that. Mm-hmm. You have to expect them to, the employee enough to, to just want to be able to stay employed. I mean, I think that's not too much to ask. But 
I'm telling you, human resources and and running a j- business is also a little bit of you know, yeah. Child rearing and babysitting because you have to have to like make sure that people they have to be super clear. Why do why do you think a human resources division is all created? But Just, it goes back to that thing where like you can't force them to care, like we were yeah. saying before. So, you but, can't, but you, you hope, can't force you them hope to ca- that you, you hope that they care. Yeah, you, you hope that they care. Job, you're right about their future and all these things. I I totally yeah. understand. I can't force them to care. I can be surprised when they can't even make it to work, though. <laughs> I mean, I, you can. I mean, I don't, again, there, there's a fine line between I, I'm forcing them to care and say, "Hey, just show up." Yeah, yeah. You know, you have to show up. That makes sense. But that's the last thing I'll say about human resources. I, sh- could, I showed up. No, you did. You yeah, made, you made I, me I nervous, landed, though. I landed at 6 a.m. You made then, me nervous with uh, the 6 a.m. Yeah. That's nerve-wracking. I changed it to come at 6 a.m. It was supposed to be 8 a.m. You're crazy. Yeah. See, what, I was like, it, what if I'm it's coming. delayed? What happens? Oh, then we're fucked. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, thanks. Yeah. And that's what happened on yeah, a Thursday. It was a mess. Sure. That day was a mess. We yeah. had to go into the details. People weren't here. More people showed up. But you did a good job that day. And if, what if you didn't make it in? Yeah, it'd be a hot mess. Yeah, I know. It'd be even worse. Yeah. It's all good. Give yourself 10 hours. Don't give yourself <laughs> three hours, okay? What time did yeah. you work that day? 10 or 11? I worked at 10 till... I yeah, don't know but you, when, got in, t- you got in off the yeah. plane at 6. Did you yeah. sleep? I did, had an, an hour nap. <laughs> yeah. I can't live I that way. And I don't sleep really well on the plane either, so... You don't take anything? I mean, I try to sleep on the plane. <laughs> do I take it? No, I don't take it. I try to sleep on the plane, but it doesn't, like... I don't sleep that yeah. well on a plane. Okay. It's not comfortable. Yeah, it's not. It's hard to sleep on planes. Yeah. Unless you knock yourself out with something. Yeah. Inoculate yourself. Yeah. Anyway. Well, that's it. I'm glad you're here, Santi. I'm glad you're back. Cool. We'll talk about your relationships later, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. There's nothing. <laughs> There's nothing, man. Nothing. Nothing. <laughs> nothing. Hey, look. Everybody's talking to me about Bumble what? The, not Bumble. There's two different Bumbles. Bumble Light or Bumble oh, This. I don't but, know. I don't know. Um, Somebody was talking about it. Okay. Somebody was at a bar and they saw people meet and they knew that it was an online date because they kind of walked in. They were like, are oh, you yeah. Billy? Yeah, or yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. You know, it's like a. Yeah. That's the awkward <laughs> part. Yeah. All right. All right, everybody. Thanks. Thank you. See you later. Hey, everybody. Hope you like the podcast. Please share it with your friends, anybody that you know, anybody that's into tennis, anybody that's into bettering themselves, share it.